for the few that have actually read any terms and conditions. What sneaky things have you found? Thank you customer for actually reading our terms and conditions. Send us an email with the following content and we will send you a free box of chocolates. They did indeed send chocolate. If you make money on TikTok, the owners can rightfully take the money. If you want to take Huawei to court you have to take them to court in China. What they don't tell you is that it's near impossible for a foreigner to win a court case in China. On Amazon, anytime they want they can take away from me the books that I've bought on Kindle store. I don't have a story myself, but I found this article about a man who won a $1,000 giveaway that was hidden in the Euler of an app. The 3,000 people who installed the program before him didn't bother to read it. I don't know if they changed it but when you chose the fragile option in a mail system like FedEx, that didn't meant they would take special care of it but that you admitted that it was fragile and therefore it could be broken without being their fault leaving you unable to sue them for breaking your package or to ask any reimbursement. Sony can sue you for literally not updating your console software if you're connected to internet. iTunes forbids you to use their software to design nuclear weapons. Found this quite a few years ago on Shive. Anyone submitting photos to us also agrees to name their firstborn son or daughter, Leo and secondborn child, John. If you stop reproducing after the first child, you must agree to acquire a panda bear from China and name it John. Resignation Media not only owns the rights to any photos you upload, but also owns the rights to your mom. Should we wish to exercise this option, you agree to surrender your mom and any claims you or your family may have on her. Within 5, 5 working days of receiving written notification from Resignation Media, in the event your dad or your mom's parent or parents intervene and claim joint ownership of your mom. Resignation media reserves the right to bitch slap them and give all parties Justin Bieber haircuts. If, upon receiving your mom, she attempts to leave the chive's kitchen where she belongs, she too will be given a Justin Bieber haircut. WhatsApp. When it went full Facebook four years after purchase, send out an Android update. The update said it was just adding the ability to give group chats a subheading. What it was actually doing was giving Facebook permission to take information. This option was enabled by default, of course it was, and you had only 3 months to notice this had happened before the option to opt out was disabled. I was late noticing this, but when I read the terms and conditions, the last line said something along the lines of, even if you opt out. Facebook and the Facebook family of companies will still take the data for training purposes. I haven't deleted my account. They probably had my info by that point, but fuck that shit. Installed Signal. Back in the day when people legally acquired new music by buying CDs, one of the bands I listened to would hide nice little messages to fans in the copyright slash legal fine print in the booklet that came with the CD. Sometimes there would be a small link to a hidden part of their website that had extra content. Gamma Station once made an immortal soul clause on April Fool's Day. To prove that no one actually reads the terms and conditions, it read by placing an order via this website on the first day of the fourth month of the year 2010 Anno Domini. You agree to grant us a non-transferable option to claim. For now and forevermore, your immortal soul. In the hiring contract for the last company I worked for, there was a line buried on page like 22 that said, if you email a certain email address on your first day saying you saw the line, you'd get a bonus day of PTO for the year. Amazon's or service terms contain a clause pertaining to a zombie apocalypse. No, really. However, this restriction will not apply in the event of the occurrence. Certified by the United States Centers for Disease Control or Successor Body of a widespread viral infection transmitted via bites or contact with bodily fluids that causes human corpses to reanimate and seek to consume living human flesh, blood, brain or nerve tissue and is likely to result in the fall of organized civilization. I can't remember the app. It was many moons ago I saw this. But it was supposed to be geared toward aspiring photographers and giving them exposure. And you could rate other photos and do challenges. 
Essentially the 2s said that anything you post is now their property that they can use for whatever they want, including making money off of it. A while ago, 2011, there was a scam work from home service widely advertised all over Facebook and other places, promising enormous paychecks and a free trial. It was an opt-out subscription service as you might expect. Curious as to how the scam worked, I looked at their TNCs. There was a clause in there requiring you to pay $10,000 in compensation to the company if you filed a charger back against their fees. Whilst that would never stand up in court, dealing with debt collectors who might conveniently offer to settle for a mere 3000 would be all sorts of hell. There was a story contest from a theme park where your story could be published. But any story submitted would automatically be owned by the company and could not be used by you or others. So they could throw your story in the trash and you still wouldn't legally own it anymore and can't publish it somewhere else. They own your story so they can make money out of it without paying you a dime. They were not obligated to credit you as the writer other than mentioning it somewhere in the first publishing, after that it was fair game. They were allowed to alter your story as they saw fit without consulting you, I wasn't the only one who noticed. It was soon pointed out on social media. There wasn't really a backlash. But I didn't submit a story. I didn't read this on the 2s, but learned about it. Amazon apparently asked its users, do you want your voice data? To be used for improving our future services, you'd think replying no would stop the transfer of voice data. No. It would only not be used for improving future services. They'd still be able to do with it whatever they were doing till date. At a gun range one time I saw that, if I yelled out I love dogs, my time and anything I buy is half price. I immediately did so. Startling my best friend. That was awesome. The contract to a job I had working in the desert warned about the frequency of alien attacks. I was disappointed to go a year and a half without any. Though. Buying my first car at a dealership too close to a naval base. Never bought a car before. Had no idea what to do. Monthly payment is $250? That sounds sensible. Sat down and read the contract much to the chagrin of the sales guy. Interest rate was 18%. I knew enough to walk away. It'd sell my soul for a donut. Your soul is the legal property of Marge Simpson, and not the devil's. I know at some point Comcast was not responsible if it killed you. Haven't looked at it in years though, used to work for them, so you get to learn the terms pretty quickly. As someone who had to get a privacy policy and read the thing, as far as I know I'm not allowed to use my own service. According to the legal agreement I got with myself and agreed to, in case I do know that I access the service against what's written and the privacy policy I should contact myself by email letting me know that, so I can erase any private data I got on myself. If I refuse to erase the data I think I can sue myself. Send help. A friend of mine claims he actually read the whole Steam's terms and conditions. Apparently they can take away games from your library whenever they want regardless of how much you paid. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the games are essentially rented digital copies without a defined return date. It wasn't actually me. It was the manager I was interning with. He told me about how it was important to read everything. Even the terms and conditions. When you go to an iPhone's license page, or something else, I don't remember. It says that they won't take any responsibility to any shock you received from the phone if it were 5mm away from you, unless you had something blocking it from your skin, like clothes, or a pocket protector. DeviantArt's 2S is basically a contract allowing them to print, reproduce, and profit from your art, if they so choose, without needing your permission or consent. Usually this takes the form of ads or contests, where they'll be used in public displays. If you post works that show a higher level of technical skill, then you need to either sign it, or use a big ol' watermark. Pretty sure anyone who ever played the original Diablo also agreed, sold their soul to the devil in the terms and conditions. I had a Victoria's Secret coupon that said Canadians are required to pass a math question or test in order to be eligible for the discount. I think I still 
have it at my desk, my job, in part is writing terms and conditions, agreements, and disclosures for the bank I work at, so I actually do read a lot of TNCs in homage to the amount of time my colleagues in the field put into writing 18 pages of shit no one but examiners read. The Canadian math requirement is the strangest I've ever seen. When we registered our Samsung front-loading washing machine online, the terms and conditions stipulated something along these lines. Use of detergents not recommended by the manufacturer may cause malfunctions not covered under warranty. But there was no specific list of recommended detergents given, other than stating they had to be high efficiency. E. Laundry detergent.